Good day, fellow skiers. Today I'm out here with my buddy Ian again. Ian. Hello. Hello. You got a master's degree in strength and conditioning. Yes. And he's also getting the Stompit coaching team fit for winter. So we can take those slams when we're out doing freestyle skiing. And hopefully, you can make them fit too. Can you? We're going to try. Yeah. So in the last video, we went through all the fundamentals. So the four pillars, and that was activation, plyometrics, ballistics, and strength. So we're going to go through this in a workout put Jens through his paces and see how he gets on. Yeah, obviously I broke my hand, so I, it's a little bit challenging, but we'll see how we go. Yeah. Come on, let's train now. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get started with activation. So down on the ground into 1990. So if you watch the first video, you remember this exercise. You can regress it by putting the hands back, or if you're a bit more flexible internally, externally through the hip, you can bring your hands forward. It'll be a little bit more tricky, but it should feel good. And again, you're gonna go for anywhere three to six reps each side, whatever, whatever you need on the day. From this exercise, we're gonna stand up, and we're gonna go into lunge twist. So you should remember this one. I like going for one. exercises that are easy for Jens today with his hand. Obviously, you can't do stuff in a push-up position. So we take it easy on the old fella. Again, nice even foot position, pushing the toe down so you've got activation through the quad, nice and straight through the core. Good. So you guys at home can do a few more sets of these, whatever you need to on the day. And obviously, we're gonna add more exercises there, but just to get you started, this is your activation part. Now we're to plyometrics. What am I gonna do? Okay, so next section, plyometrics. Now we're gonna do pogo hops. I know okay, how to so do that. Off the toes, exactly. So we wanna keep in the toes up, dorsiflexed. 12 to 15 reps. Remember with plyometrics, up to 80 to 100 con ground contacts per session is enough for a beginner. And that's plenty for Jens. Next exercise, we're going to move on to squat jumps. So finding your squat position, dropping down and exploding up. Not super deep. Okay. Good. So minimal ground contact time. And again, five to six reps should be enough there, Jens. Don't overload your Pretty system. <laughs> so remember, central nervous system fatigue. Super important here that we don't completely screw ourselves for the workout that's coming. But essentially, it should look something like that. To begin with, you're going to probably start with less, right? So one to two sets should be enough. And with the pogos, 12 to 15 reps maximum. A little 30 seconds to maybe a minute rest till you feel, you know, get your breath back. Squat jumps, same thing. And I think he did too many squat jumps. So probably six, maximum eight. All right, Jens, yeah, so moving on to ballistics. All right, you're going to show me an explosive step up using this box and this kettlebell. Let's have a look. All righty. Let's see how nice I can do it. Okay, so again, not too many reps on this. Six, three to six per side, depending on how you're feeling. And again, if we're looking at this, it's maximum intent with this movement. So his brain is telling his central nervous system and the muscles to act. So we're thinking about intention. It's pretty hard, actually. Yep. All right, next exercise, Jens, is gonna be a broad jump, okay? So mm -hmm. we're going high to low, so triple extension again, down and then up, horizontal, Forward, okay, so more ground contact time for this exercise. All right. Nice. How was that? So focusing on really landing nice and evenly on both feet. If you measure your distance each time and try and improve on it, obviously if that distance gets less, then you're a bit too fatigued. This exercise perhaps give a little bit more rest than Jens is between sets. Maybe three to five is gonna be enough per session. Okay, so he's using a lot of explosive energy there. So he's coming from that triple extension position down, exploding up. All of that force is going into the ground and propelling him forward. Giving me, aw me awesome ski pop. Big tricks are coming. All right, so we're moving on. You've done two to three sets of your plyometrics, your ballistic exercises, paying attention to how you feel. Obviously that's gonna dictate how many sets and reps you're gonna do. Moving on to the strength part. We're gonna do one of the most awesome exercises, and that's gonna be barbell back squat. You, of course, can do kettlebells if you're not comfortable with it, but Jens is a pro, so let's check it out. 
So finding nice even hand position, taking a few steps back, find your foot position nice and wide so your hips can get through that space. Keeping the elbows in, locked, barbell safe on the traps. He's gonna take a breath in. Hips are gonna lead, and then he's gonna drop down, add in some tempo, say three seconds, pause, and then drive up. Okay, so we're working that eccentric strength on the way down, thinking about landing, loading, pausing, and then driving up. So the concentric element going back up again is giving you uh, more power out of the movement. The eccentric element going back down is giving you a better absorption forces. One more. And drive up. Good. Okay, he doesn't have the best grip on the bar because of the, the hand again, but doing pretty good. Hold on, Jens. Thank you. All right, so between these kind of exercises, we're using a barbell generally yeah, anywhere from six to 10 reps, usually about two, maybe three, if it's a bit heavier, up to four, even five minutes rest between sets. Okay, moving on. Yeah. You feel okay? Absolutely. Good, so next exercise, we're gonna do hollow hold, right? So this is a classic. Now then, show me a hollow hold, Jens. I'm not so good at this, but. Okay, so let's strip this back down. So lie straight, okay. First thing you're gonna do is bend your knees and bring them up to your chest, all the way up, good. Then you're going to extend out. Okay, keep in that position. Okay, then we're going to lift the shoulders off the ground and we're applying as much pressure to the abdomen here as possible. You can also put your arms over your head if you want to make it a little bit more challenging. You can add load to this and you're holding this for as long as possible. Minimum 30 seconds. If you can manage a minute, then you're an absolute beast. How's that feeling? Oh, it's it's solid in there. Too hard to talk. <laughs> It's so hot in here. All right, good work, Jens. So you guys obviously are gonna try and do that for a little bit longer. Strong core, super important. We need something that's gonna help us through those turns, jumps, landing, and it should be nice and strong and solid up here. All right, so we're really smashing these, right? So we're gonna move on to calf raises. We've not talked so much about the calf muscles. Really important because there's tons of um, forces going through the calf muscles, so sometimes up to eight, 10 times body weight going through those muscles. They're a super resilient muscle. They recover pretty well, and we should look after them. They're tucked away inside your ski boots, but we do need them. So Jens is gonna take the barbell. You could try it with dumbbells if you're not comfortable. We're gonna elevate the position, and he's gonna step over, right, and put your toes up on it, right, and then he's gonna go up into plantar flexion. You can see those calves working down into dorsiflexion. The more, the more range you've got, the better this exercise is going to work. And you can see we've got both of those muscles working inside the calf. A couple of other things you can do is you can turn the feet in. And if you turn the heels out slightly, ends on the next rep. Like exactly. That. And then go up. You're going to feel it in a different area, probably towards the lateral or the outside edge. You can also turn the toes out. Okay and rest. So 12 to 15 reps, you can do single legs, you can do both together, whatever feels more comfortable for you. Okay, so that wraps up your session. Obviously, we're going to spend a bit more time resting in between. We're going to, you know, perhaps add a few extra exercises, usually between three and four per section. Okay, and they're going to vary from day one to day two, but mostly so we're hitting um, the majority of muscles throughout the body specifically quads, hamstrings, glutes. Um, how was that for you? Rapid. Uh, good. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I've only done a small part of what it would be for you guys, because you do more sets of all the exercises yeah. than I did. But I'm warm, yeah. and I'm probably gonna feel some of it. Yeah. Okay, so some of you might have questions about stretching. Mm -hmm. Okay, beyond this, I would say, you know, actually, like, the more time you spend doing these kind of things, uh, you know, it's potentially time wasted, right? But if you do enjoy a little bit of stretch and a bit of movement to um, finish up a workout, by all means. But remember getting those post-workout carbs and proteins into your body and having a good sleep afterwards. I mean, obviously that was just a few exercises just to give some examples of how this kind of stuff works. And um, we've gone through how we can transfer, uh, you know, sports-specific training over to skiing. 
and hopefully that will have some effect on performance. How are you feeling, Jens? Well, good. A little bit sweaty. I always enjoy training with you. Thanks for training me once again, even if this is a little bit simpler than my personal program, but the foundations are the same. If you want to learn even more, check out the link in the description. Ian has prepared an eight-week program for skiers, which is very similar to what he's doing with me and the coaches. Have a nice day and see you in the next one.